up YouTube? This is a quick unboxing. I purchased the four door speakers for the 2017 WRX. Um, if you've seen my WRX review, you know that the sound is absolutely atrocious. Um, it's just not acceptable. And in my quest to fix the sound, I'm going to be installing an inline amplifier, a four channel inline amplifier to drive these four speakers. Um, and I've, I'm also gonna install a sub and an amp and that's going to be covered in a separate video but uh, I've already done an unboxing of the inline amplifier so I'm going to do a quick unboxing and show you what, what to expect when you purchase the four door speakers so I'm just going to open one There's, it comes in this box nothing fancy um, this is straight from a Subaru dealership you can get it on Amazon eBay um, I got it from a dealership in Colorado um, so I'm going to pull out one of them made exclusively by kicker for the wrx so you can see it has foam it'll it should sit against the the door panel nice and flush and, and it shouldn't rattle or vibrate or anything like that um i should mention these speakers 50 watt rms um the inline amplifier is 45 watts rms so it should these two together should work very nicely and it should it should definitely um, augment the very crappy head unit that is just completely underpowered I mean you have to pretty much blast the volume all the way up to get any sort of sound out of it and, and then it's not nice sound it, it sounds like a screaming at you um, absolutely no mids absolutely no lows um, so this this should fix that a little bit and we'll see take it from there I just wanted to take a second to appreciate the differences between the stock bass um, system speaker and the kicker speaker upgrade. On the left, you, you can already see the differences. This is this probably weighs a couple ounces at most, and it's it's literally, I mean, it, it's it's really junk. It's truly junk. This. It's very hefty, it's very heavy. You can see the, the difference in magnet size alone, um, which makes makes up most of the difference in weight. But as you can see, the difference is crazy. When we're ready to install the speakers, the first step is to remove the door panel. To do this, we have to first remove the two screws holding the panel in place. This is pretty standard ops for any car door and it's important because if you forget and try to force a panel out, you can break any number of things behind the panel if it snaps back at you. Or you can cause the panel to fit loosely on the door when you reinstall it. After the screws are out and in a safe place, the door panel is ready to come off. Just forward of the speaker, the door panel has a lip you can grab onto to start pulling back as such. Once the door panel is loose from the door, you can lift it off the door and reach behind it to remove the door handle and lock cables. Just snap them out and lift them out of their holes. Then rotate the door and rest it on its side on top of a towel so you don't scratch the door panel. I had every intention of completely removing the door panel for this installation and um, I almost did. However, this plug right here for the uh, four windows has the clip in the back behind it here and there's only like an inch of space behind it um, to stick your finger in and and try to push in that that little tab I wasn't able to do it um, I, I didn't try too hard but I don't I don't want to mess with it I wasn't really able to do it um, I thought about just removing the entire thing there's two clips right here, you can see, one here and one right here. 
Um, but there's also two clips in the back and they too are hard to get out. So I decided to leave the door uh, panel attached. So what I did was I just moved it to the left when I was working on the right and then I moved it to the right when I was working on the left and um, that was it. Uh, I didn't have this problem with the other doors. All the other doors, uh, you can easily get to the, the little clips to remove the plugs. But this one right here was a pain and I just decided rather than force it, I'll just leave it there. So I decided to install a little bit of sound deadening material around the door while I had the panel off. I decided to do that to cut down a little bit on the road noise. Now I realize this is sound dampening and it's not really made to cut down on noise. It's made to uh, basically dampen vibrations and, and but it does cut out a little bit of the road noise and that's all I, that's all I wanted. So what I did, as you can see, I put on the flat areas that I could access, I put uh, some strips. While the speaker was out, I was, I was able to access the whole back side of the door. So I put long strips all the way down on the back behind here and the same thing up here. The way I did it was I just, I simply took this plastic cover and I, and I kind of peeled it off while retaining that uh, tar on there and I just taped it out of the way and um, I stuck my hands in and the roller and I put the sound dampening material in and then I, I sealed it back up. A couple things to keep in mind when you do that. One, make sure you use a roller, don't use your hand, use a roller to ensure that uh, the adhesive and the tar really sticks to the uh, car. Two, make sure you don't rip or destroy anything uh, when you're doing that. When you take this, this plastic off, make sure you put it right back where, where you took it off from. Another very important thing is don't cover any holes that the car has. See like holes like that, holes like that. Um, some of these holes, are to access screws on the other side so you don't want to cover them some of the holes on the bottom are actually for drain in case you get water in there which you do get water in there believe it or not um, so make sure you don't cover any holes at all and some of them are for the clips like these on the outside are for the clips so it's very important not to cover any any holes up um, and you don't have to cover every square inch just the flatter areas that you can get it. It doesn't have to be a messy installation. It doesn't have to be very, it, this, this wasn't very time consuming and it really did make a difference. It, ma it made it better. When I close the door, it's a very nice thump that it, it does now. It, you can tell that there's no rattles. Um, so you wanna do that, that's, that's, uh, that's entirely up to you. Now it's also entirely up to you which sound detonant material you use. You can use Dynamat if you've got the money. If you don't, use a cheaper alternative. And as some people do, uh, you can use like peel and seal. Like there's there's a couple schools of thought on that, and I'm not really gonna get into it whether it's it's good to use peel and seal or whether it's not. That's not what this video is about. But whatever sound detonant material you use, um, it's very easy to do once you get the panel removed. Just move the panel out of the way, and and you'll be good to go. And it does provide an improvement in road noise um, a little bit and, and it controls the sound and the frequencies that come out of the speaker it, it, it cleans it up a little bit um, which is, is, is exactly what you want so that's that so as you can see I've already installed the kicker speaker on this door it's self-explanatory you remove the three screws unplug it remove the speaker put in the kicker upgrade speaker put the screws back and plug it in. One thing to note is the upgrade comes with this foam tape and what this foam tape is for is to prevent rattle so this that right there can possibly rattle in the future with the vibration of the speakers and especially if you have a, a sub. So in order to prevent that rattle you would take this uh, foam tape and wrap it around that and that's what the foam tape is for. So that's what we're gonna do now. So now if there's a rattle, the foam will dampen it and uh, good to go. So that's it for the kicker um, door upgrade. It's, it's that simple. The main reason to get this over a different speaker would be 
because you don't need any adapters, you don't need any brackets, you don't need anything at all. You pop out the old speaker, you put this one in, it fits in perfectly. It already comes with the foam. It already comes with the, the proper uh, plug. You don't need to do anything else. That's it for this. So you could literally do all four doors. If you just do the doors and you don't do the, the sound dampening material like I did, um, you could do all four doors in, in you know, probably less than 45 minutes. Um, it's very quick. You pop out the doors, move them to the side, three screws, unplug, put the uh, new kicker speaker in, then um, put the door back. Um, that's it. When you pull the door panel off, there's a good chance that one of these retaining clips may get stuck on the door. Um, you have to, before putting the door panel back, you have to remove them and put them back on the door panel. If you don't have the right tool to do it, there's an easy way of doing it. Grab yourself a hammer and a rag. Just put the rag on the door to protect the finish and then right over the hammer like that and pull it out. It's that easy. So you're gonna put the door panel back on. Um, you wanna make sure that your retaining clips are out of the door. And I've already shown you how to get those out. Um, normally they have a rubber washer like this that goes around the retaining clip as such. Um, and these will go on the door panel. But there's a better way of doing it, I think, to prevent uh, any rattles and to make the door fit very tightly on the frame. So what you do is you use some high quality electrical tape, cut a tiny strip of the tape and put it over the hole, like that. Then you poke a hole in the middle, like that. So what's gonna happen is, you're gonna put the clips back on the door panel and when you put the door panel on and you close it up, it's gonna create a very tight seal around that clip. And it's not going anywhere, it's not rattling. Uh, it's, it's much better than it was before. I'm gonna do that with all of the doors retaining clips. <clears throat> so where the retaining clips meet the door panel is also a big source of vibration and looseness. And you can see right here, how loose that fits in there. This is a brand new car. Um, and you can see how loose it fits in there. And they all fit the exact same way. They're loose like that. Um, so my goal is to put the door panel back on after having done all this work. And I, and I want the door panel to fit solid on the door. And when I close the door, I don't want it to be any vibration, any looseness. I want it to feel solid and, and, and high quality. So we're going to do a similar trick as we did on the door panel. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of uh, electrical tape again, high quality electrical tape, and you're gonna cut a slit about halfway, right down the middle on the tape. You're gonna remove the retaining clip from the door panel. You're gonna take the tape and you're gonna fold it against itself on the non-sticky side. And with the door, with the, um, excuse me, with the slit on the outside, you're gonna put it right in that hole. Just, just like that. I know it doesn't look pretty, it doesn't have to be. The whole purpose of it is to create a little seal around there so that the retaining clip can fit tightly in there. So once you, once you do that, and again, it doesn't have to be pretty, you can stick the retaining clip back on there and now, solid. Doesn't slide, it doesn't go anywhere. See how the entire door moves with it? Perfect. I'm gonna do that with all the retaining clips on the door. All right, so to finish the installation, we've already installed the speaker where it goes. We've installed sound dampening material. We've gone over some tips on how to make the door solid. Uh, now it's time to put it all back together. Now remember, if you hadn't done it already, to take off any any retaining clips that may be on the door uh, and put them back on the door panel. I've already done that and I've also uh, done my little trick with the, with the tape. Um, so we have to put the door lock and the door handle back on. 
So uh, if, if you forgot where they go, they're, one of them is bigger than the other, so you can't really mess it up. Um, but the, the yellow one goes on top. So we're gonna go ahead and just put that back on there. It just takes a second. There's one. There's two. Once you get that, those two put on there, um, just had to hang it back where you got it from. There we go. Once you have the door where it goes, um, it's a matter of pushing it back in, pushing the retaining clips from the door panel back onto the door. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. You can hear the distinctive clip click. So now we're solid in there. Next step is to put the screws back where they go. Now that everything's put back together and we tested the door handle and the lock and the power windows, um, and I tested that already and it, it all functions properly. I just wanna show you what it sounds like now which sounds great so it's a solid door the door itself is solid there's no vibrations no rattles no anything so mission accomplished so as a little comparison um, I haven't done anything with the trunk yet uh, it has absolute, absolutely no sound dampening or deadening material. It's as it came um, when I bought the car. So I want to show you how crappy this sounds. Like you can always, you can hear there's nothing there already. It's just metal. Check it out. You hear the vibrations? I mean, part of it is, is the license plate. I know that, but it's still, it's still nothing there. So. That's going to be a future project. It's going to be sound deadening the entire trunk um, and getting rid of those vibrations in back here. Hear that? So that's it. That wraps up the installation of the kicker door upgrade to the sound system and WRX. Um, I've, I've had it for a while now. It sounds pretty good. It's a big improvement. I also installed the sound deadening material, so cheated a little bit there, but it does sound better. It's not 100% yet, I'm not fully satisfied with it yet, but it does sound better. So in the next video, I'm gonna cover in the installation of the tweeters, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on that also. Um, the video after that, I'm gonna cover a sub and amp installation, not the kicker sub and amp, an aftermarket sub and amp. So if you're interested in those videos, please subscribe, and you'll be notified when they come out. If you have any questions, just comment below and I'll answer them. Uh, thanks for watching.